founder of Self-Reliance Mastery, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade, organic, super potent, immune-boosting, natural medicine tincture that is alcohol-free. So this is really great for the kids, it's really great for the family, it's great for yourself, especially if you feel any kind of cold coming on, if you feel any kind of flu, if you feel any symptoms that you're going to be sick or you're already sick. Um, this particular mixture is going to boost your immune system. It's going to help fight off free radicals and fight off bacteria and viruses. It's going to help basically strengthen you, give you energy, and give your body the ability to heal itself, which is what we want, right? There's no such thing as a medicine out there that's going to heal you. Why we use natural medicines and, such as herbs and vegetables and fruits, uh, these natural medicines of the planet is because they allow our system in our body, our immune system, to do what it does naturally, which is to maintain a perfect state of health. So if you have the flu, if you have a virus, if you have symptoms from bacteria or, or any kind of disease in your body, it's simply because your immune system is not strong enough to fight that off. You see, you could test me or anybody else and we're full of bacteria and viruses all the time. The difference is, is it affecting you and are you seeing symptoms from it or is your immune system strong enough to battle it off so you don't even notice it? You see, I work with a lot of experts in, uh, in integrative health and integrative medicine and what they all agree on is if you have a very strong, fully functioning immune system, you won't even have diagnoses such as cancer and these types of diseases, autoimmune diseases, and this sort of thing. So it's really about boosting our immune system. At the same time, it's about being self-reliant because we can make our own in-home organic medicine, natural medicine, organic tincture, that is anywhere from four to six times more cost-effective. So four to six times cheaper than if I go to the store and buy one of these things, right? Uh, this Echinacea Golden Seal or this Echinacea, I mean these run anywhere from $12 to $20 per bottle depending on the brand uh, that you get. So the reality is we can make about four times, four to six times that amount for much cheaper or actually the same cost. You're, you're saving quite a bit. So let me show you what mixture we're going to use today because this is what's really important is the particular types of herbs that you're using. My choice of herbs is this double immune, E immune booster. Now these are organic and the reason you want organic is because if it's not organic then most likely unless you're growing it yourself or you're getting it from a local farmer you know is growing organic even if they're not certified. The reason you want organic is because most of the time farmers are using pesticides and herbicides and you're getting those chemicals into your bloodstream, into your body when you're digesting them, when you're taking them or ingesting them, when you're putting them in medicine. So even though you might be boosting your immune system, you're creating more opportunity for your immune system to have to fight off other things like pesticides and herbicides. And if it's genetically modified, then you get into that whole thing. So you want organic, you want non-GMO. This is a company, Bulk Herb Store. I have a link to this down below, but the reason I use this one is it's organic and the combination is the best. It has nettle leaf, peppermint, echinacea root, and echinacea tops. So you're getting uh, pretty much all the essence of echinacea that you want in your body. You're getting elderberries, which are just so powerful for boosting the immune system, very rich in antioxidants. You're getting luthero root and rose hips. Again, all of these are about boosting the immune system, fighting off free radicals. They're full of antioxidants. They help your body to do what it does naturally, which is to stay healthy. So, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need a mason jar. You can get a couple of these if you want. This will make quite a bit. Um, this mason jar is going to make a number of these bottles here. Uh, I reuse a lot of bottles, but I always use glass. I try never to use plastic because any liquid inside plastic is going to leach the chemicals out of the plastic into your body. So you want to use glass whenever you can. You can use the droppers, you can use the sprays, again plastic. This is really good. You got sore throat coming on, 
or your family, someone around you's got a sore throat, you want to prevent it, or you want to soothe your throat, you got a cough or whatever, you can spray it back there. See, this is this is a bottle I bought of something else, and I'm just reusing. Some of these are brand new. More sprays, um, and again, you've got dark, you've got amber glass. Anyway, try to use glass whenever you can. You're going to need a number of these bottles. I have different sizes, so I don't know exactly what you need, but four or five different bottles, different sizes, whatever you have. You can order them on Amazon for like five, ten bucks for a set of them. Not expensive. The other thing you're going to need is some alcohol. I use alcohol just for cleansing as I'm, as I'm working to help keep bacteria out of the tincture. Some labels you can write on and then label your jars. Um, and what we're using is vegetable glycerin. Now this is 100% pure uh, vegetable glycerin. The truth is, uh, the research I've done, the purest vegetable glycerin is 99.7% um, because 0.3% is water, 99.7% is the glycerin. I don't think most people understand what vegetable glycerin is. And what it is is basically they're separating the glycerol from the vegetables from the fat, from the lipids, and they're separating that in a heat extraction process. So basically, what comes out here is this sweet, kind of fatty type of liquid, which helps to preserve, it also helps to extract the essence, the, en the, the energy, the life force that you want from these herbs. Now, an alcohol tincture is gonna be a little bit more potent. It's gonna to help to extract a little bit more of the essence from the plants, but the vegetable glycerin, in my opinion, is not only safer for you, but it's better for your children because you're not putting alcohol in their bodies, um, and it tastes better. My daughter loves it because vegetable glycerin is a little bit sweet. So she, she you know, she said, Dad, can I have some medicine? Yeah, she knows this is our medicine. I'll show you my medicine cabinet here pretty soon. We don't have pharmaceuticals. We don't have uh, any painkillers that you buy in stores. Everything we have is either homemade it's homeopathic, it's herbal, and the beautiful thing is, and knock on wood, is you know my daughter's four years old, and this is a lifestyle she's had her whole life, uh, plant-based diet and natural medicines, um, and fortunately, she's never been to the doctor for any illnesses. She's never had shots or inoculations. She hasn't had any kind of, uh, uh, any of that, and she's one of the healthiest children that, um, that uh, people tell us that they've ever seen. And uh, I really believe a big part of it is the fact that we don't take pharmaceuticals, we don't take drugs, and all we take is uh, natural type medicine. So anyway, I want to get right into this. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really easy. It's really simple. The other thing is that this can either take you six weeks until you get your final product, or it can take you three days. So I'm going to show you the three-day version because especially if it's winter time or whatever, you got cold coming on, you don't want to wait six weeks. Um, the three-day version will get you what you need very quickly. It's very potent. All right. Again, there's links to everything below this video, but let's go ahead, hop over to the kitchen, and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our jar. What I like to do is take a little bit of 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Just dab a tiny bit on my hands. If you got any cuts on your hands, might burn a little bit, but not a big deal. Then uh, clean out the jar, and I'll pour in about a teaspoon or a tablespoon or so. Swirl it around real good. Get all parts of it. Pour it out on the lid. Swirl it around. Pour some on our spoon, like this. And then dump it out. Okay? So there. You really don't have to worry about it too much. I, just a little extra safety precaution. Make sure your tincture comes out nice and super solid and clean. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and pour in our herbs to the jar. And what you wanna do is fill it up about halfway if you're using dry herbs. Now, if you're using fresh herbs, you're gonna to want to at least double it. Now you could go one third of the way, like that. And you're gonna get a really good tincture. If you want a super potent tincture, very powerful, 
go ahead and fill it up about somewhere around halfway. Close to there, just under half. Look at this, we still have half a bag left. So in Self-Reliance Mastery, there's links to that below this video, um, I'm going to show you some other videos, which is for our insider members community. Um, I'll be creating some other videos of some other very powerful medicines, aside from tinctures you can make from these herbs. So, you can check that out below. In the meantime, next thing we're going to do, go ahead and take our vegetable glycerin here. Actually, I'm going to take the lid off and uh, just fill it all the way up. Um, I made a little bit of a mistake. Before we do the vegetable glycerin, what I like to do, and you don't have to do it, I got a little bit ahead of myself, you don't have to do it, but what I like to do is heat up a little bit of water to boiling and then let it you know, simmer down, stop boiling for about 30 seconds or a minute so it's nice and hot and then I'll just coat the herbs. Um, just get them a little bit wet, some hot water, that way it will help open them up, expand them and help their healing properties to be released easier during the extraction process. So I'm going to go heat some water and go ahead and put it on. Even though I put some glycerin in there already, it doesn't matter. I'll just shake it up a little bit. So I'll, I'll heat some water, I'll bring it right back here. Alright, so we're back with the water, just got to boiling. Let it sit for about 30 seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and just coat all of our herbs here. Nice hot water, mix it up real good. We just want to bring out some of their healing properties. Just like when you make tea, right? Using hot water to extract the nutrients from the tea it opens it up and allows all the good stuff to come out. So, just we don't want too much in there, just enough to dampen it all a little bit. There, just like that. All right, see, everything's just a little bit damp. There's, but there's no water running, that's what you want. And the rest of it, we're going to fill it up with our glycerin. Right to the top. Leave just a little bit of space at the top. Any kind of expansion, but with this, because we're doing heat, it's not really going to expand too much. The herbs will a little bit, but they'll actually soak up a lot of the glycerin. You'll see some of your glycerin actually go down. So you can bring it up just right under the lid. This is the perfect bottle for this jar. So we've got our spoon. I disinfected the counter before, if you're wondering. So you can you know wipe, wipe it down with alcohol if you're, if you're a little bit... Uh, like me but see we've got this big gap empty space at the top I want to fill that with glycerin I'm gonna get some more glycerin I'll be right back don't go anywhere I'll be right back so I just need a little extra glycerin in here I buy about three or four of these bottles at a time just so I've always got some extra now this one jar of Tincture is going to last you at least a couple years for you and your family to stay healthy. There's going to be a lot of tincture, trust me. It's going to be more than you need, um, probably more than you need, which is good. You don't ever want to not have enough, especially when you, if you get any kind of serious cold or flu going on. So anyways, take your spoon in, mix it up real good. Got to get everything at the bottom up to the top. So everything gets coated with the glycerin. So you mix it up real good. You can see it's already soaking some of it up. So we'll add some more here. It's closer to about one and a half bottles of these for this larger mason jar. And again, it all depends on how much herbs that you use. 
because we did about a half jar here full of herbs alright looking pretty good there we go everything's mixed up real well alright go ahead put your lid on then we're going to take it over the stove and I'll show you how to do this in three days so just to give you a um, quick understanding if you don't know the traditional way is put this in a cupboard keep it away from the light as much as you can and you shake it at least once a day for six weeks that's if you want to do the traditional way really allow it to sit and settle um, if you don't need it right away just make sure you shake it at least once a day it would be ready in four weeks it usually is but if you really want to go the full length of the time really extract everything out let it sit in your cupboard for six weeks shake it once a day let's head over to the stove so I can show you how to do this in three days all right okay so this takes a little bit of maintenance for three days but then you got your medicine so here's what I got I've got a pot filled with water uh, about half full and in the bottom I just place a rag like this from the bottom to the sides that way when I put my mason jar in here it's not going to break so throw it on the stove put the jar in on top of the rag see the water comes up to the edge obviously you don't want it coming over and then we're going to go ahead and throw this on about a medium heat until the water is just you don't want it to boil. You want it to be hot, hot to the touch, but not to boil. And you don't want to leave it there for too long. So there's two options to do this. One is you take a crock pot, plug in your crock pot, put it on the lowest setting, put your jar in it, same thing with the water, and let it sit for three days, mixing it at least once a day. I don't have a crock pot. I don't use a crock pot. I just have the thing on the stove. So this is the way I do it. You can do it this way if you don't have a crock pot. You don't want to go buy a crock pot. Um, again, you don't want it to boil over and you just heat it up three times a day. So when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do when I'm making my breakfast, I'll turn this on, let it warm up, get to hot, and then I'll turn it off and let it sit. In the afternoon, I'll do the same thing. In the evening before I go to bed, I'll do the same thing. I just let it heat up. I'll take it out like this, mix it like this. Don't take the lid off. Just mix it like this three times a day, heat it up three times a day, and go through all three days. So the, the morning of the fourth day is when it's going to be ready. Okay? Easy. Let's head over for some final wrap up discussion. So at the end of the three days, what you're going to have is all your herb mixture, right? What you need to do is take it out and run it through either a nut milk bag or cheesecloth, um, any kind of cheesecloth type bag. Nut milk bags are great. You can get these on Amazon. You get a few dollars. Um, and you don't want to pour the whole thing in there at once. What you want to do is pour in about quarter of it at a time only fill up half this bag with your herbs and your liquid and then just spend some time squeezing it really good squeeze it really good and take it all the liquid out do that into like a bowl or um, a jar or something squeeze it all out and um, compost your herbs or reuse them for something else right don't throw them in the trash put them in your garden they're gonna create a lot of really good nutrients for for your soil once you finish with that, you're going to have your bowl with your liquid, right? Get a little funnel, a little paper funnel, whatever. I make my funnels out of a sheet of paper. Just tape it, pour your funnel, put your funnel end in here, pour it in, and you've got your medicine. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Now, I label it immune booster, and then I date it for two years. Some people date it for one year. Um, what I've seen is two years is fine. You decide, it's up to you. You know, you can taste a little bit after a year or two years. If it still tastes good, tastes fine. You don't see the issues with it. 
you know, you're going to be fine. If you notice any rancidity or anything like that, obviously don't take it. Um, but usually with a vegetable glycerin, what I've seen, it'll last up to two years. So again, this bottle, homemade with the immune, immune booster. So we're talking, um, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven really powerful herbs. Costs four times as cheap to make than it does to go buy echinacea, one herb, right? We've got two parts of the echinacea plant in here. So not only is it cheaper for you to do, it's really fast and easy. It's better for your health, it's better for yourself, it's better for the planet, right? You're reusing bottles, you're making it at home, you're supporting organic farmers. You, even better, if you don't wanna buy this, m grow your own herbs at home. Uh, but if you do want this, this is the best mixture I've seen on the market. There's a link below this video. You can click it, it'll take you right to it. It'll take you to their website. You can search double E immune booster or just search immune booster. Anyway, it's worth it. It's fantastic. It's gonna help you stay healthy, help you be strong, help you fight colds and flus and all that stuff. And that's what we want, right? So if you like this video, please do me a huge favor. Leave me your comments below, share it, click the like button. And if you want more, in-depth self-reliant survival and sustainable living training, not from just myself, but from dozens of experts around the world, go to selfreliancemastery.com, become a member, and join our self-reliance community. All right, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next time.